This is a story you've probably never heard of. Did you know that the former supreme Libyan leader was accused of an entanglement with the former first French lady? Now, is it possible that this, among many other reasons, may have precipitated his assassination? And that's the question today. Look, because personally, I've never really bought into the narrative of Colonel Gaddafi being assassinated because he wanted to create a single African currency that was backed by gold. And I will discuss it a bit further in this video. However, if there is one thing, one thing we know for sure is that Western elites never forgive nor forget unless it's on their term. And this is the story. You see, in 2007, Cecilia Sarkozy was given the delicate diplomatic mission of negotiating the release of six, six medics, five Bulgarian nurses and one Palestinian doctor who were facing the death penalty in Libya after being found guilty of a cocktail of crimes, including starting an HIV epidemic in 1998 at a children's hospital in Benghazi. Now, according to reports, Muammar Gaddafi demanded to meet the former French first lady alone, and they agreed to it. I mean, knowing what they told the world they knew about Muammar Gaddafi, they still agreed to it. And in her book, she described it as a lonely diplomatic mission and recounted how she was driven alone to an isolated compound in a vehicle that blocked mobile phone signals. Then when she arrived, she was led into an underground bunker. She entered the door and it was immediately shut behind her. And she heard the, the key locking her inside, but at the same time, another door opened inside and there was the supreme Libyan leader. Then she claimed he moved towards her with too much excitement and boldness, making her feel uncomfortable. However, let's remember that in every story, there are two sides, and this is her side. Because for obvious, obvious reasons, the colonel will not be here to give us his version. By the way, like, share, and subscribe. I post videos on a daily basis, including public holidays. But let's refocus to the story. Because according to a French journalist, Emilie Lan Lanez, the supreme leader tried to touch and kiss the first lady and she could tell that the, you know, the Libyan leader desired her in undiplomatic ways. But then again, she had to win his clemency without giving in to his desire. And the journalist added that for hours and hours in the middle of the night, the first lady courageously negotiated with the supreme leader alone while ensuring that her boundaries were never crossed. And in her, you know, in her book, the first lady claimed that she told the Libyan leader, and I quote, if anything happens to me here, you will have to answer for it in front of the international community, and you don't want that to happen, end quote. <laughs> but he did answer. Therefore, as a result of that meeting, the medics were all released. Now, a few months later, you know, a few months later, uh, a considerable amount of armed deals between both countries were signed, although they denied that it, they denied, they said it wasn't part of the deal for releasing the prisoners. Side note, do you remember the story of the 17 European citizens who attempted to kidnap 103 children from Chad to France, but were arrested at the Abisha airport, ready to board the plane with the children? Um, that was during the same year, and it was still President Sarkozy who was in charge of negotiating the release of these prisoners from Chad. I'll link the video somewhere so you, could, you, you can also check it if you haven't seen it. Still now, back to the story. According to the journalist, when the First Lady returned to Paris, she told her story during a dinner to five people, including President Nicolas Sarkozy, her former husband. And while she was sharing her successful story of freeing the medics, her phone couldn't stop vibrating. But she kept ignoring the call. Now, when she was done storytelling, her phone rang for the eighth time and she answered it while putting it on a loudspeaker. And allegedly on the other side of the phone was the Libyan supreme leader who the journalist claimed he said, On entend 
la voix du colonel Kadhafi qui dit « Cecilia, I want you, Cecilia, I want you back ». Now fast forward three months later on October 18, 2007, an official statement was released announcing the divorce of the presidential couple. And remember, Muammar Gaddafi was assassinated on the same month, on, on the 20th, four years later. And rumors at the time alleged that it was a French secret service who pulled the trigger for reasons we will discuss a bit later in this video. However, let's go back to the story. You see, in December 2007, the Libyan leader was officially invited to Paris by the French president for a five days state visit. And he was allowed to plant his Bedouin style tent on the ground of a state owned mansion opposite the Elysee Palace. Needless to say, this was one of the most controversial state visits of that year. However, as we all know, we live in a world where money talks. You can finish the rest of the sentence. You see, for the Libyan leader, the carpet was rolled out so far that it reached the other side of the country. And some French, including some Europeans, did not like the look of it and did not understand the reasoning for allowing such thing to happen. However, much later in this saga, we came to hear that the former president Nicolas Sarkozy was being investigated for allegedly receiving 50 million euros in campaign fund from the Libyan leader. And this might explain why they wanted him physically put in the past tense. Because imagine how humiliating he would have, it would have been if the Libyan leader had released a statement saying that he funded his campaign. However, that still doesn't explain the sudden hatred of the French president toward the Libyan leader. It doesn't. Or perhaps this was a case of the financier becoming unpredictable and believing that he could get away with anything, even potentially resorting to blackmail, including, including whatever happened that night in Benghazi. Listen, we have heard stories of presidents sharing beds with other presidents' wife and politicians. So these types of stories is nothing new, but the result here is different. I mean, it's a game of power when the one who gives feels the need to stress the one who receives. <laughs> Just like people who sell their souls for money and fame and are forced to do weird things. Now think about this. If you sold your soul for money and then you were given an opportunity to stab the devil in the chest, wouldn't you take it? <laughs> Personally, I would plant it deep like a gardener hoping to see flowers flourish. <laughs> but, but, but listen, I mean, the court of public opinion, of opinion was not present that night. So we can only speculate because how do you explain that four years later, after welcoming the Libyan leader in Paris with all the honors and trumpets, now all of a sudden, he wanted him dead by any means necessary. In French, they say, la vengeance est un plat qui se mange froid. And in my village, they say, the axe forgets, but the tree remembers. You see, Personally, I've never really accepted the narrative of the of Muammar Gaddafi being assassinated because he wanted to create a single African currency backed by gold. I mean, we can't even agree to come up with a single West African currency. And this has been postponed, I think, four or five times, you know, and they've been debating this for over 35 years because some people want the complete, you know, a completely a complete detachment from France, while others want to maintain it among other problems. And this is just West Africa, but there is still North, East, Central, Southern Africa. I mean, for how long have we heard? Have we heard about the single African passport? And we are still waiting for it. <laughs> and now add to that the fact that Colonel Gaddafi wasn't unanimously backed, accepted, or in good terms with all the African heads of state. I mean, you can easily count how many spoke in favor to prevent the, Lib the Libyan invasion. And you could throw in the mix the complicated history between Libya and Chad. Also, the Libyan leader was not a Pan-Africanist, but a dedicated Pan-Arabist until the later stage of his political career.
Look, a single African currency backed by gold is a brilliant idea, but I doubt that even if there was no invasion, he would have not experienced it in his lifetime because there is just too many competition and necessary competitions among African states with colonial borders that were decided by a small group of elite Europeans in Berlin, Germany between 1884 to 1885. But back to the story. So when the Benghazi uprising began, which some claim it was steered by La France, it is alleged that President Sarkozy used it as an opportunity to get his cold revenge served, featuring the former British Prime Minister David Cameron, whose country already despised the Libyan leader, and the former US President Barack Obama, whose country also detested and had a history with Muammar Gaddafi. All that backed by NATO and the international community under the guise of preventing a so-called bloodbath in Benghazi, which later, later turned out to be a lie because there was not going to be such a thing in Benghazi. You see, the decision to invade Libya was a disaster because it destabilized the whole region, leading to all sorts of human rights violations like the slave market in Libya, the birth of all kinds of terrorist organizations in the region, and the immigration crisis towards Europe. Maybe we've been looking at it the wrong way. Maybe the goal was to reshuffle the region by destabilizing it in order to tighten Western imperialism grip in the region or at, in Africa at large. Because you see, this story is quite interesting when you think about it. In 2007, Colonel Gaddafi, who had been in power for over 38 years, was officially invited to France with all the honors and trumpets. And then four years later, all of a sudden, Western elites fell out of their bed and had an epiphany where they found out that Mr. Colonel Gaddafi was all of a sudden a brutal dictator. I guess the question of what really happened that night will never be, never be fully answered. And to be honest, at this point in time, it no longer matters. But at least on top of all the reasons for the Libyan invasion, this can also be included. Now, before I let you go, let me tell you this. One of my uncles once told me, if you want to live long on this earth, there are two things you must never mess with. Another man's money and his wife. And if you are to choose between the two, pick money because you might be given an opportunity to pay it back. But the man's wife, <laughs> please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you. Wait, Nini?